So all this is going on, he says to me, do you ever travel for like not work, like for fun? Fun? You think any of this is fun? I mean, it's a hassle traveling, going through the, the airports and, and, and having cars take you places. And, and, and they told me they're going on a cruise. Well, that's like an airplane you don't come off of or like a hotel just floating out into the abyss. I mean, to me, that's more of a prison than a vacation. I mean, you know, they don't even have Internet out there, I think. I don't know. I hear stories. You'd have to you'd have to tell me about that. But it certainly doesn't sound like fun. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to proceed with our best practice PowerShell thing. What do we call it? Best practices, PowerShell best practices for Intune. I knew it was in there somewhere, and it's all about functions today. I, I don't know. I'm between so many trips. I don't even know what I mean. I, I, I might be due on a plane right now somewhere. I don't. Oh, uh, wait a minute. What day is it? solving for the modern workplace. Let's talk about the structure of a function. Um, I actually released the article first this time as opposed to the video, it just worked out that way. I don't really have a reason for it. So to write a function, you write the word function. Y'all with me so far? And then you name your function, right? So uh, a typical one you might see online is the function's name is say hello. And then under it, you have curly braces because that's going to be your logic. So it takes an input, which is a parameter, and that parameter will tell it it's a string, and it's called name. Now what we'll do is when we run the say hello function, we take the name and we write output, and it'll be a little saying here, hello, hello, name. And that's it. So if I run this, nothing happens, right? The function is in there. But if I want to call say hello, and I'll put in Bob, it's going to say hello, Bob. Or if I do say hello, Steve, hello, Steve. Okay, so that's the idea of the function, right? It takes some kind of input and it does something. In our case, it's just writing the output. Let's talk about a function that gets compliant. So I'm going to authenticate to the graph. Real quick, I might be authenticated already, but you never know. It looks like I am. Okay, so I'm gonna say I have a user whose name is Rick Jones. So we all know Rick here, rubixdev.com. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna invoke, invoke a graph request. Um, I'm gonna get all of the Intune managed devices, graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash device management slash managed devices. We're going to do a filter equals um, user principal name is equal to user. Okay, five things came back. So I have to open that up uh, value wise. So let me put this in a variable here. So we'll say devices. And we'll put that in a value. Now when I call devices, you see we have five devices. So these are five of Rick's devices. And now I want to find their um, their compliance status. So what I can do, let's see where that compliance status is. It should be is compliant, is compliant. Yeah, compliance state is compliant. So now I want to return uh, the compliance. Okay, so it would take a lot of work to shift through here and look at each device and pull out the compliance state and uh, maybe other details like the ID and the device name, but that's what a function is for. So we want a function where we could just throw a username in and get all that information back. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a function called get, get device compliance. All right, it's very, 
Very good name there. I'm just joking. Uh, the parameter it'll take in will be a string and we're going to give it a, we're going to say that's a username is going to be the parameter we pass through. So now what we do is we set some things up for ourselves. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to collect devices for that user. And that's going to be equal to invoke MG graph request get URI HTTPS graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash device management slash managed devices question tick dollar filter equals user principal name is equal to and that's our username variable uh yeah username and then at the end of that we'll put value so that'll give us all our devices and then we'll put for each device in devices we will say that the compliance is equal to device dot compliance state the name is equal to the device dot device name. So you see, it's just pulling all these values for us, which is nice. And the ID equals device dot ID. All right. So now what we can do is we can just write the output, um, write output username has, has device. We'll put the device name as device name with ID, we'll put the ID and compliance state is compliance. There we go. So we, we kind of can just get all that information out for us. Um, cool. So we run that. Nothing happens. Let's try it again with Rick Jones. So we're going to get, get device compliance. Get device compliance username Rick Jones at rubixdev.com. Oh, okay. I noticed I had a hyphen here for equals. We don't need that for graph stuff. So let's clear this. Let's run it again and let's try that again. So look what it spits out. Rick Jones has device gives device name with the ID, boom. Uh, and the compliance state is compliant. It also tells me if it's not compliant. So I get all that compliance information back. Let's try this with another uh, user. Let's try this with myself. So I don't have to go back and do everything again. I'm changing one variable. There we go. I have mostly compliant devices. Oh, I feel so special. Um, you can also change things about this, right? The nice thing about a function is it's doing a lot of the work for us. So let's say I don't want to have to add the rubixdev.com thing, right? Um, so the username, I could always put something on top of that. So I could say user principal name equals username plus at rubixdev.com. Then I can just change some of these parameters and I'll change this one, right? And the benefit here is I don't have to type in the whole thing. So watch this. I'm going to run that again. And now we're just going to put in get device compliance. Username is Rick Jones. We don't need the uh, Rick Jones. We don't need the whole thing. And it still does it for us. It can attach the rubixdev.com thing, right? Um, so we can have this do a number of things for us. The main point is just instead of us going through all these manual commands, boom, we type one function, we get what we need and we're out of there. Now, the nice thing about functions is we can incorporate some of the pieces we already learned into this, right? Error handling is so important because what happens if, for example, I run this function and there is no user, right? So what would happen is if I do get device compliance, the username is Fred Johnson. I'm making it up. Nothing happened. I get nothing back. And the real reason is there is no user. What we should do is if there's no devices coming back, right? So 
if we put the username together and we run that command and it just returns nothing at all, we're going to skip that part. So why don't we just put an if else here? So if else, that is very basic error handling. So I'm going to take the entire for each loop we built and put it inside uh, an if statement. All right. So our if statement is going to be if devices count is not equal to zero. So if anything comes back, then we run through the list. Else, we're just going to say no device is found for the user principal name. So let's do that again first for Rick Jones. So we're going to say get device compliance username Rick Jones. Because we know Rick has devices. There they all, they all come back. Now, if we do the same thing, but we do it for Fred Johnson again, no device is found for Fred Johnson. So with a little, you know, planning there, we're going to get a response back no matter what. Functions are absolutely critical to PowerShell. Um, as you can see just here from the demo as we walk through, they save you so much time, um, especially if it's something, you know, you'd be surprised. Even if you're running something two or three times, you think, well, I'm not going to automate it. Uh, maybe you're writing a script and you just have the single lines out there. It's still worth it to do. They add structure, right? Um, they're kind of easy to read. It's almost like, you know, you're just setting up all these little code blocks to do these different jobs. So uh, highly recommend it. What we're going to do next time is we'll get into some more, I think uh, we'll do a part two of functions, right? We'll, we'll go a little bit deeper into some more advanced things uh, you can do with functions and we'll kind of up the error handling on there and uh, we'll do more than just like string input parameters. We'll be seeing you.